And so here we have this Pesach miracle. As we're moving into the Pesach season, we see God do this miracle. And then look at starting with verse 16 of chapter 6. Uh, it says, when evening came, his disciples went down to the lake. We're talking about the Sea of Galilee. And it says, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. Now, some people say, oh, wait a minute. In Mark, it says they're going toward Bethsaida, Bethsaida or Bethesda or whatever. Uh, so there's some kind of contradiction here. There's no contradiction. If, if I set off to, uh, from the west side in Manhattan toward, uh, the, let's say, to, toward uh, the UN, and there's some kind of traffic problem in, in, the, uh, in Central Park, and I don't get through Central Park, and I only get as far as, let's say, uh, uh, Central Park West, and I get to Central Park West, you can't say, oh, there's a contradiction. He said he was going to the UN and he only went to Central Park West. Look, we find out that these guys that are in this boat run into a great big storm at sea and the boat is almost capsized and it's a very scary thing. Yeah, yeah. So don't try to find some kind of, uh, of, of contradiction here because if somebody told the story, oh yeah, he was going toward the UN, and then somebody else tells the story and they say, no, he was going towards Central Park West. They're both right. Amen. I was going both, both directions. Uh, but look what it says here. By now it was dark and Yeshua had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed three or four, uh, it says three or three and a half miles, uh, they saw Yeshua approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were terrified. Uh, uh, now, let me just continue to read this. We find out from, from uh, another source that he had gone up to pray, but then he saw that they were having trouble, and there was no other boat there to get him from point A to point B. And so... Uh, that that was that was the, uh, the the other part of the story here, and it says, and, and it says they were terrified, but he said to them, "It is I. Don't be afraid." Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the the boat reached the shore where they were heading. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had been there and that Yeshua had not entered it with his disciples, wow. but that they had uh, gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Yeshua nor his disciples was there, they got into the boats and went into Capernaum in search of Yeshua. Now, here's the point. The author of this uh, of, of this uh, document is aware of the other accounts. Yes, yes. And he is giving here an objective proof that the other accounts are right. Because here you have all these eyewitnesses that there was one boat, his disciples were, were in the boat, and he wasn't. Mm -hmm. They went from point A to point B. The question is, how did he get from point A to point B? Right. There was no other way. There was no other boat. There was no other means. You're going to say that he swam from point A to point B. You're going to say that he uh, treaded water uh, and he got out there and he waited and he, he somehow uh, got from point A to point B that way. Listen, all these eyewitnesses know that he did get from point A to point B, even though they can't tell you for sure how he got there. But the ones in the boat saw him. They saw him walking on the water. Now listen, friend, if I can feed 5,000 people and I can suspend the laws of physics and do all this with a little boy sack lunch, then I can also suspend the laws of physics yeah. and walk on water. Amen. As a matter of fact, if I am the 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 Zun Funderoy the uh, El Elohim Haben, 
the, the bar and nose coming on the clouds of glory. Listen, friend, if I can walk on the clouds, I can walk on the water. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. You, have, you have to know that you have to know who you're dealing with here. Amen. And, and, and I believe Daniel. I believe the book of Daniel. I've read the book of Daniel. You've got to read the book of Daniel. Uh, and, and, and you know, in, in, the, in the book of Isaiah, uh, we know that I believe it's in chapter 45 or so that uh, it, 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 uh, it names the, the king, the Persian king, Cyrus. But there's one problem with that. This is like 150 years before the guy existed. How in the world can Isaiah know his name before he existed? 150 years before that. How could he know? And, and here's the thing that really blows your mind. You say, well, you know, that's just the Bible. There's a lot of myths and stories in there. A lot of things happened after the fact. And then they write it down like it was a prophecy and all that. But here's the problem with your skepticism. There was a man named Josephus. He was a historian. Yes, yes, yes. He was right there, 70 CE, when the Beis Amikdash was destroyed by the Romans. He was writing everything down. And he tells us, as a historian, that when somebody took the scroll that had Cyrus's name, and that Cyrus was going to rebuild the Beis Amikdash and showed it to King Cyrus, he was so flabbergasted to see his name in an ancient scroll that had been written a couple of centuries, almost a couple of centuries before, that he approved the Jews going back to the Holy Land. He, he, he made the provision uh, to, to, to pay for their, their, their uh, built, rebuilding the temple. Wow. And, and we get this not in the Bible, but from a historian named Josephus. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Can you say praise the Lord? Listen, fair friend. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. Amen. But how shall they hear without, without a mavaser, without a magid? Hallelujah. Amen. My people perish for a lack of knowledge of the word of God. Amen. And, 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 and here's what I'm saying. Uh, instead of, of, of just focusing on all the books outside the Bible, but not actually reading the Bible itself, and not ever hearing the Bible preached with faith, we have to pray for the Jewish people that they will come to a knowledge, uh, a, a saving knowledge of the Lord. It says, you who bring good news, good tidings to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. Hallelujah. Here is your God. Hallelujah. And that's what we got to do. So, so don't lose the glory of your vocation, friend. You've been called. Now, the other day I was walking around in Midwood, and I saw a little advertisement. It says, a reliable driver is needed to make a delivery. A route is needed to send a package. A messenger is needed to deliver stuff. Uh, someone uh, is needed to drop off uh, uh, something to, to the people. A, a responsible courier is needed to make a delivery. Uh, and then it talks about uh, someone helping you with whatever you've left or overlooked accidentally. And then it says a daily route to Williamsburg, Borough Park, Flatbush, Muncie, Monroe, that would be Spring Valley, uh, you know, and also above that, Orange County and Rockland County, Lakewood, and Crown Heights. Hallelujah. And then it shows a little driver, and, uh, and it shows him making the delivery. And I'm telling you, this is what the Lord wants you to do. Hallelujah. And this, this technology that you've been given, oh, hallelujah, this cell phone that can have a GPS.